The next question is, Doctor, I have come to you. You have made a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis. And you have done the blood test also, which shows that I have got rheumatoid arthritis. What else will you do? What else will I do is, if necessary, I will take x-rays. If it is not necessary, I will not take x-rays at all. There is no necessity to take x-rays in all patients with rheumatoid arthritis unless the joints are affected badly with deformities or the knee joint is worn out secondary due to rheumatoid. It is only in such situations the doctor orders an x-ray because x-ray also means exposure to radiation. So how will you address, how will you treat the patient with rheumatoid arthritis? The first question which patients ask me is, doctor, I have rheumatoid arthritis. Can you cure it? Let me be very frank. Absolutely honest. After having taken the oath of Hippocrates in medicine, rheumatoid arthritis is not curable, but it is only controllable. Rheumatoid arthritis is not curable, but it is only controllable. It requires lifelong treatment. Is there any school of medicine which can completely cure rheumatoid arthritis? No. No school of medicine can claim that it can cure rheumatoid arthritis, but we can control rheumatoid arthritis. Next question you will ask, Doctor, I have got rheumatoid arthritis. Will I become crippled in bed? Not at all. All patients with rheumatoid arthritis do not develop deformities to get crippled in bed only a minority. They do extremely well with disease control with wonderful drugs which are available in the Indian subcontinent today. 35 years ago, when I started my career as a rheumatologist, let me tell you very frankly, very few medications were available to treat rheumatoid arthritis. Now we have wonderful medications to treat rheumatoid arthritis in our own country, India, and where People are getting into medical tourism and coming from all over the world to take treatment from rheumatologists in this country. So I would rather say with pride that India in no way is inferior to any other country in the world in the treatment for rheumatoid arthritis and gone are the days when people used to go earlier for a bypass surgery to abroad. Now the same bypass surgery is done more technically sound in this country so no necessity for patients with rheumatoid arthritis to cross the border to get treatment for rheumatoid. How do we treat patients with rheumatoid arthritis? The first important point is, is whenever somebody has got a problem, it is absolutely essential and the duty of the doctor to educate the patient regarding the disease, whether it is curable or not curable. How long to take treatment? What are the medications which are given? What are the side effects associated with these medications? Should they alter the life, the methodology of living? Is there any special diet? What they should do? What they should not do? When this sort of education goes along between the doctor and the patient, what we call effective doctor-patient communication, the patient, once they know about the disease, they are well convinced and they accept the problem. Everybody has got problems in this world. There is nobody without a problem. There is nobody without tension. Tension is a sign of existence. There is only one person who does not have tension and that is the man who is dead and lying down in the grave. But nobody after death has come and told me I am having tension or I am absolutely fine. I don't know about that. And I also not gone through that experience, but still because I'm a little frightened because COVID may be next door. So what I'm telling you, you have to get educated by the doctor regarding the chronic nature of the disease. I told you that is this lifelong treatment. The moment I say lifelong treatment, sorry to tell you, this is not humor, but there are incidents which happen in my life which I have to share with you. One patient had rheumatoid arthritis, I actually she happened to be a very good friend of mine. She told me, doctor, I have rheumatoid and you're telling me that I have to take it treatment lifelong. 
whose life long should I take treatment? I said, you have the arthritis, so you have to take your life long. She said, what are the possibilities which can occur to me? I said, one possibility is I'm chronologically elder to you. I may die earlier, earlier than you. Then in that situation, you have to see another rheumatologist. Very rarely, if you die earlier than me, then there is no problem at all because you do not exist. If both of us die at the same time, there's no problem at all for both of us because both of us do not exist. I'm not talking this in a very humorous sense, but to just put across the fact that rheumatoid arthritis requires lifelong treatment. Acceptance is very, very important in life. If you do not accept and you go against the tide fighting in life, life becomes very, very miserable. That is what the Buddha said, just to go along with the flow. That's very, very important. If you go along with the flow in life, in all aspects of existence, life becomes very, very smooth. So how do we treat rheumatoid arthritis? What medications we give? On one hand, we have the process of inflammation, joints getting swollen, very painful. So to extinguish the fire of inflammation, to bring down the inflammation, we give the medications called anti-inflammatory drugs, which in a layman's term will be called painkillers. But basically there is the disease process on the other side, which is responsible to light the fire of inflammation and that we call it as the basic disease process. So if you take the management of rheumatoid arthritis, you have to give them painkillers to reduce the pain and the inflammation and the swelling and improve their quality of life. On the other hand, we have to give them disease modifying drugs, which will modify the disease process control and arrest the disease. That's very, very important. What are these painkillers? A doctor may call them as anti-inflammatory medications. What do they? Just give me some example. I'm not talking about any commercial names. Well, you have medications like ibuprofen, diclofenac, sodium, peroxicum, naproxen, and so many medications are available in the world. These are very, very effective painkillers which will bring down the inflammation. What does the rheumatologist do? He prescribes these painkillers or anti-inflammatory agents to patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Doctor, you said my disease is lifelong. Should I take painkillers for a long period of time? Invariably, the rheumatologist will not give it for a prolonged period of time because these medications also have side effects. What are the important side effects of these painkillers? Painkillers are not very friendly as far as the stomach is concerned. If anybody takes it for a long protracted period of time, they can develop ulcers in the stomach. They can develop abdominal pain. Sometimes they can vomit. They will have loss of appetite and some people can even have ulcers which bleed and they can vomit blood. So painkillers should not be taken for a protracted period of time. Number two, they should be taken only under medical supervision. You know what is my experience with patients with rheumatoid when I prescribe them painkillers? I prescribe it for about eight weeks or three months and ask them to come after eight weeks or three months. Patients come back after three years or 30 years. For three or 30 years, they continue to take these medications. And unfortunately in this country, medications are available across the counter. The pharmacist people think is a better doctor than the doctor itself. If you assume that I'm a doctor, I have read MBBS for five years, did house surgency for one year, that is six years, then I do MD general medicine for two years or three years, so that becomes nine years. Then I do a DM for two years. After 11 years, I get qualified to become a rheumatologist. And still after 12 years, I still have to see more patients to become more knowledgeable. And still after 35 years, I should accept honestly that I know very little and I don't know a lot. How can a pharmacist or a neighbor who is not a doctor know about medications? 
if your friend somebody will come and tell me doctor i just went to my next house that lady has got rheumatoid arthritis she's taking ibuprofen she also gave me some 20 tablets of ibuprofen to take if any person who calls himself a friend and gives you a painkiller he is not your friend he is an enemy painkillers should not be taken just like that self medication is absolutely dangerous self medication is absolutely suicidal i can tell you one thing i would rather face the covid virus i will fight it and not develop covid infection infection i will not die due to covid disease but i can die due to self medication why painkillers are never to be given in patients who have renal failure if you have an enemy who does not who has renal failure and whose obituary you desire to come in the newspaper the next day give him one tablet of a painkiller and tomorrow you will find him dead if people have ulcers which cause, cause bleeding in the stomach give him in a give him a painkiller he can bleed into death so my humble request to all of you let me tell you anything now even we can start and say can't say namaste because of social distancing it being between the hands so what i am telling you is i sincerely request all of you please do not get into self medication do not become a doctor unless you have become a, gone to a medical college and you got qualified in mbbs and subsequent super specialty degrees a doctor can always become a patient a doctor can develop rheumatoid arthritis but a patient cannot become a doctor without going to a medical college that means a recognized medical college that's very very important so for rheumatoid arthritis we give patients painkillers for a period of time for a quantum of time depending upon the choice and the doctor's choice as such that's very very important there are some people in whom we give painkillers for rheumatoid only for 8 to 8 6 weeks or 12 weeks there are some people for whom we may even give them for a year but we take the responsibility of giving the painkiller provided you meet the doctor regularly that's very very important so please avoid self medication and for heaven's sake when the doctor says please come after 8 weeks or 12 weeks please kindly go and meet the rheumatologist this is very very important the second point there is another drug which is useful to reduce the pain and inflammation and this drug is called steroids steroids were discovered by a person by name robert hench 100 years ago for which he got the nobel prize but he just sent me an email from the heavens yesterday he is very upset about the misuse of steroids in the world steroid medications if you know you have medications like vizolone prednisolone then you have decadron dexamethasone and intramuscular steroids etc they are used in a variety of conditions like treating asthma autoimmune diseases like rheumatoid arthritis for excessive allergy they are very wonderful drugs they are used in the treatment of bronchial asthma but the most important point is in rheumatoid arthritis if people are given steroids they will become absolutely fine the pain will not be there the swelling will completely disappear like the indian rope did and people will be absolutely fine again steroids will be produced or be prescribed only by the rheumatologist and at no point of time you should continue the steroids indefinitely this is a major problem which i see in this country suppose we prescribe steroid and ask them to take it only for 4 weeks they come after 4 years what happens at the end of 4 years if they take steroids they become chubby like a pumpkin they develop diabetes they develop blood pressure they develop cataract the bones become very fragile what we call as osteoporosis and they become steroid dependent they get addicted to steroid the moment they stop steroids the pain and swelling in the joint will flat up again and so steroids are prescribed only by the doctor for a fixed quantum of time and patients should not self medicate themselves with steroids that's very very important 